All right, guys, for those that have been asking, we've created a four part multi series talking about the production and pre production for our recent spec project for Hirelands and Ride Cycle. In this series, we're gonna talk about four topics. We're gonna talk about the client and brands that you wanna work with. We're gonna talk about the pre-production, the team and equipment, as well as the cinematography breakdown. Long-term goals and short-term goals will inform all of your decisions. So when you know your long-term and short-term goals, you'll know whether or not the projects that you take on are worthwhile for your portfolio. Before every new project and spec, we always like to ask ourselves, is this the right project for us? Does this help us in our long-term and does this get us one step closer to the projects that we want to be doing? To us, long-term goals are typically big vision, large concepts, and clients that we want to work with, the Nikes and the Lululemons of the world. Short-term goals are typically the smaller projects and the skills that we want to gain along the way to add to our portfolio to eventually get us to that long-term goal. Once you have a good grasp of these two concepts, start reaching out to businesses and companies that align with these two goals. If you're trying to become a fashion filmmaker, then doing a music video will not necessarily help you in that field. You may learn some new technical skills, but you won't find that they're translating completely 100%. So really build up your portfolio in that space and focus in on your niche. If you're trying to get into the fashion space, ideally you're gonna be working strictly in fashion to continue to build your portfolio. The more you spread yourself thin, the further away you're actually becoming from an expert in that space. So dial in on what you want to do and really try to do more spec work and typically finding companies that you've had previous relationships with will make your life a lot easier. You already have some rapport built. So ultimately I reached out to a company called Hirelands that reached out to us last year and we didn't create anything last year, but now it felt like the right time and we've already built up some rapport. So, and it made it a lot easier for us to reach back out and pitch our spec idea. When we originally started working with Hirelands, we sat down and we figured out exactly what it was that their goals and intentions were. Understanding these two things will let you know whether or not you're going in the right direction. Now, when it comes to spec jobs, it's important to figure out what your deliverables are. You don't wanna be overshooting and doing too much or doing too little when it's not really beneficial for both sides. When we went to this project, we discussed the deliverables list. We wanted to do a 30 to 45 second spot and then also for them on their side, they wanted to get content that they can post to kind of advertise for this project. And so they wanted a few 15 second ads and we knew we could provide that. So we said yes. And from there we knew both sides would be happy with the deliverable list and it was feasible for us. We knew the timelines as well. One of the biggest misconceptions with spec work is doing spec work that loses creative control. The second you lose creative control, you're just doing free work for this company. It's important to have this conversation with your client for them to know that, hey, this is a portfolio job for yourself, but you're here to help them. You're providing the resources that they might not otherwise have. That's the trade-off. You wanna make sure that at the end of the day, they're okay with your creative control, your creative liberties, and, and that you on the creative end are providing them what they need on their end as well. Now, the next step is locking the creative. Once you've compiled all the information necessary, figure out what it is creatively that you wanna do with this project. This is your opportunity to showcase your unique voice and your skill sets when it comes to filmmaking and directing. You wanna go out and create a director's treatment something that you can showcase what your voice is, what your story is, and give the client a better idea of what's going on in your mind and how you wanna approach their brand. Ultimately, this director's treatment is your aesthetic. This is how you wanna approach your future projects, your long-term and short-term goals. This is your way to showcase who you are and future clients who you are as well. Once you have this director's treatment created, run through it with your client. Make sure that they know what's going on. Explain to them how you see the project going. This is a place where they're gonna have their creative input and you have a chance to workshop it together. Here's a quick overview of the Hirelands treatment that we've created. Uh, we just wanted to showcase exactly what the story was, how we were gonna approach it. Typically, we get a lot of our references and stills from Vimeo, but there's also websites like Shot Deck as well as Frameset. Originally, when we started creatively collaborating on this project, we didn't even really know what we were getting into. We thought it was just gonna be a fall winter collection drop, but it actually ended up being a collaboration drop with Ride Cycle, a local cycle studio in Toronto. And really that informed the entire project. From there, we decided to put in a cycle segment, try to balance the two clothing and cycle segments of the business. 
And with this collaboration, this whole idea was informed based off of that conversation we had. And without that conversation, you don't really know what you're trying to provide. You don't necessarily want to be pushing all the time on your ideas that don't necessarily help the brand or business. So from that one conversation, it allows you to figure out what it is that you're doing. And at the end of the day, Hirelands was happy. We were happy and we found a creative solution that aligned with everyone. Once you have your creative locked in, then the next step is locking in your team. Typically at this step, I'd lock in a DP and a producer. The producer is gonna handle a lot of the logistics and then the DP is gonna focus a little bit more on the creative segments. Everyone works a little bit differently in this industry, but in my case, I like to be a little bit more collaborative and get help across the board so everyone's aligned when we move forward. I brought in Zach, he's one of our internal DPs in Tenfold and he helped bring the vision to life. And from a top level perspective, we'll talk about the concept, the colors, the feel, and the sound. Once a baseline of information is set, then we can move over to the more technical sides of pre-production. That would include things like shot listing, location scouts, and pre visiting From the producer standpoint, this would include the person that's gonna help with logistics. So any of your finances, your budgeting, as well as your team and locations. One of the big things you're gonna realize with specs are that this is a very nimble team. Oftentimes you don't have a specific individual for every single role, and you'll often find people juggling multiple roles on sets. Creating a really strong team will lead to a successful project. So make sure that the foundation around your team is really strong. And from there, you'll have no problems making these specs. And that's it for this segment. Zach's going to bring you through the more technical processes of pre-production in the next video. So keep an eye out for that. So if this is the content that you're interested in, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.